All right. Well, this is Unleashing Leadership, and I'm Travis Moss, CEO of C Planning Group, and my co-host here is Dave Nurtsy, our Chief Operating Officer. And this podcast is all about how we implement key takeaways from great books into our business. And today we are working on a takeaway from the book Build by Tony Fidel. And first up on the pick list is doing the work does not mean locking yourself in a room. Walk with your team and get to the destination together. I think I think that's part um, uh, Tonyism and and part of uh, Travisism. I, th- I think it's oh, those, those are the part. best. I guess yeah, Travisisms yeah. in there. Definitely something I would have said in the second half. Uh, so I think we're going to do this one as always do us a favor, like, or subscribe to us wherever you are listening or watching that helps other people find the show. And wouldn't it be great if we could have lots of people listening and get stuff like this, working on getting better personally and professionally. And as always, we do have a sponsor sponsor for the show. And today's sponsor is ditch the suits podcast, 2023 podcast of the year in all categories, by cool podcast agency where we, Focus on helping you get more out of your money in life. And so that is a show that I actually am a co-host on with Steve Campbell, our chief brand officer, actually. So you can check that out at ditchthesuits.com or wherever podcasts can be found. We talk about money and finance and all that kind of good stuff on that show. All right, Dave, working, doing the work does not mean locking yourself. This is the silo rule, right? Mm-hmm. Like this, this bridges into... What was the season with the F and silos? Um, Ideal I team player. I think that was the one before you brought me on. Yeah. I think that was one of your favorite books, Ideal Team Player, I think it was. Or I maybe. Think, uh, might even, no, it might have been Team of Teams. Team of Teams, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, Team of Teams. Yeah, basically, we just went on a F bomb rant about <laughs> silos and locking yourself in a room and, you know executives want the corner office. They want to, you know, it's kind of the uh, epitome of making it is having the big office. And so what do we do? We get to a certain level and then we lock ourselves in an office away from everybody else. And we start to lose touch with what's actually going on around us. And our ego doesn't allow us to get reincorporated. We went through a process really post COVID. We took all the offices away. (laughs) You're literally recording in what used to be my office. Yep. Um, the birth then, of the pit. What was that? The birth of the pit. Yeah, the birth of the pit. And then uh, when I came down to Tennessee, somebody else took that office over. But down here, I never got an office. When when we opened the office down here, we just have a pit area, what we affectionately call the pit. Same thing with our Syracuse office. There was never individual offices, just conference rooms if you need a meeting. Otherwise, everybody's in the pit area and got all kinds of kickback. When we first did that, remember, it was like, oh, I can't concentrate. Mm-hmm. It's too distracting. There's a lot of ego problems with it. Some yeah. people just jumped on, though. Um, some people were like, that's awesome. When can I get out there in a the group with everybody? But yeah. we, we had a handful of people uh, kind of fight it, and, well, we fixed that problem. Um, but you really can't. You You really – cannot do great work and you and I don't think you become indispensable um via isolation right well you're missing out on you know the the overall like feel or the tone of things that are happening or conversations that happen right that's one thing we talk about a lot you just overhear things that are happening good or bad right you you can and if it's a public type of conversation you could interject you could offer something in the moment uh, you don't have to schedule a meeting. You don't have to, you know, stumble upon something. It's it's easy to be aware of what's happening, especially in the physical office. But a lot of times, you know, our, our team members are on a virtual call or something right at their desk, and you, you could kind of get an idea of what's happening. And it's it's just helpful. There's any arguments against it, I think, are, are outweighed. Pretty They're juvenile. I, I, yeah. I honestly think unless you're dealing with very, very sensitive information that people cannot overhear. And even that there's, there's very little information mm-hmm. going and on. And that's why business. you have the conference rooms, right? You, right. you do have a place you to get up and for... use conference room. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, so you have that and the whole like distraction thing. A lot of us, right. You have, you get a pair of $20 headphones or something that you could put on. And if you're trying to focus on something, you throw those yeah. on for a little bit. I don't buy that anyway. People are like, I want to work from home more. I want to work from home more. Okay, we're going to work in the pit. I can't. It's too distracting. It's like literally, 
you work at home with four screaming kids like climbing all over you or your dogs barking at everybody who's walking or every yep. time the mailman like rings your doorbell or something like that. Right. And you're saying that it's too distracting to sit in a room and work with your colleagues. It's just, it's, it's who are all trying to work too. It's, it's kind of like learn, maybe you need to learn some office etiquette or something. Maybe you need to learn, you know, if somebody's distracting you or something, how to say, Hey, mm-hmm. you know, time out here. But, um, I think it's just excuses. And I think being out in the crew and walking, um, we'll get to walking, we'll get to the walking part, but just being part of the crew, I think builds trust because yes. when people get to see you and hear you, people forget that it's also, how do you deal with things? And yeah. if you, if I'm comfortable with you because you kind of, you're in the same environment with me all the time, I can let my guard down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can trust that I can say something or bring something up to you or come to you with an issue. And and it's not scary like going behind a, a, a wall someplace. Or a lot of times people are in an office with closed doors. So anybody who goes in that office to talk, there must be something going on. Right. Versus just seeing it right out there in front of you know everybody. Like it's just, this is what's going on. Um, I really do think it, it, it builds trust and helps people say, hey, you know, I, I can go to this person or I can say this in front of this person without, you know, sabotaging my career or something like that. Yeah. And it, the transparency factor, right. And it kind of breaks down like these, like the perception of like barriers for an executive team or a management team that are in these big offices. And yeah. it's like, well, I can't approach Travis or I can't approach Dave because they're in their office. The door's closed or, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't want to do that. Then it makes it like a big thing. Right. So when you're just out there, you are more approachable. And if, and if you're busy, you tell the person, Hey, this isn't a good time. Right. It, it's a very easy way to communicate. And you, it really just, to me, it breaks down that whole like perception or, or barrier that I'm, you know, I'm not approachable because of my right. title or my position. Yeah. And I think, I think uh, maybe the part of the book that this is from, I, I think Tony's talking about more of like the, uh, the regular worker, we're talking more from a leadership perspective, but mm-hmm. the regular worker, you know, um, I do my job. I'm good. Leave me alone. I would say that the best employees are the employees that do their job. And even if it means they're slightly less productive, are integrated with the rest of the team. Right. Meaning they're spending time with each other. They're building relationships. They're building community within the organization. So they like and they trust each other. Right. Or at least they respect each other. Right. So you don't necessarily have to like each other, but you should respect each other and you should trust each other. And so you can't build that by just doing your job and only focusing on your job and saying, OK, peace out. I did my job. I'm done. Those people tend to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, there's more of a selfish kind of undertone to it. Uh Plus, there, there, you, you miss a lot. You miss an awful lot about what's going on around you. Yep. Um, so you don't necessarily understand the cues or, or when somebody's stressed out because something's going on with them. And so you miss an opportunity to either help them or, uh, an opportunity to better understand a situation. So you don't unfairly pass judgment. Yep. And I think the walking part, walk with your team and, and get to the destination together. To me, uh, you can, you can look at your employees or your coworkers as tools. Or you can look at them as kind of co-pilots. And the benefit of that is that one person doesn't have to fly, you know, be the pilot all the time. They can take a nap while somebody else is flying, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I think you could be um, literal with this and say, look, those who walk together, just like those who eat together, if you spend more time doing activity together, you're going to have a, a better bond you're going to have better conversations and those types of things. But if you are hand in hand with your team, so more of a figurative, um, so less, less literal, less literal and more figurative. If you are walking hand in hand with your team, if you're out there in the pit, if you're going through everything with them, if they see what you're going through, if they see how you handle things and that type of stuff, um, it's it's a lot easier for people to buy into who you are and what you're doing and kind of mm-hmm. walk that journey with you to go through the bad days with you because it's not all good days. 
You know, as, as Sylvester Stallone says, it ain't all sunshine and ra- uh, rainbows, right? I think that's one of Rocky's lines. Yep. Yeah. Um, I know your favorite movie of all time, but. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it, well, it helps you, you know, we talk about us, uh, we've talked about surrounded by idiots and like the colors, right? Different personality types. It helps you understand who you're working with, right? It's not, it's not just something on paper or a project or a task you turn in. You're you're around the people, you're understanding how they work, you understand how to communicate with them better because you hear them, right? You, you're you around them more. So it just becomes a, a more overall, you know, a well-rounded experience of, okay, this is how I commute. This is the best way I could communicate with this person because I know how they are now because I'm around them. I have built a relationship with them. Um, and if you're locked in a room, right? The whole, like the first part there. Yeah. Whatever you're working on, even if it is a major project or something like huge or and really important, the impact or the value I would I would think would be limited at the company because you haven't had any proper right you know uh, ideas or or uh, suggestions or recommendations from other people right you're just kind of just working on something here it is well then right. people aren't going to feel involved or or whatever the case is right like there's not going to be as much input in that. Well, you might you might say, well, I use my Teams app or my internal chat apps and stuff like that, and I run meeting virtual meetings and everything. There's something very different for getting face to face time, actual real time together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I really do believe that, and I, and I also think within business, there's going to come a point where you're going to need allies. You're going to need people who support your ideas and who have bought into you and what you're doing and. And they're really willing to go through the thick of it with you. And you're not going to build those types of relationships isolating yourself. Right. You only build those types of relationships where somebody actually is willing to fight for you by spending time together. And and again, it can be time while you're working, but it's time in, in the vicinity of each other. So you get used to each other. It's a familiarity. Mm-hmm. It's this person's been sitting across the, the the room from me for the last three years. You know, I've seen them come into work every day and, and go home every day, regardless of what's going on in their lives. I've seen them show up and stay late to get projects done. I've seen them blah, 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 blah. Like that resonates with you. This mm-hmm. person's the CEO and they're sitting at the same desk as the newest person in the company, yep. in the same room as the newest person in the company. There's so much that you get from that, yeah. right? Including hearing about how to talk about business Mm -hmm. right and how to deal with issues your strongest people need to be the people in the middle of the pack showing people this is how we do it not hold away in an office someplace so they don't have to talk to people during the day 